Hey everyone, it's Bluebeer here, and welcome back to another review on Dogman. Today, we're going to be reviewing the next three books in the series. So, we start off with Dogman and Cat Kid, aka the bridge between the old series and the new series. In my opinion, that at least. So, overall, this book was actually kind of better than the third book. Trust me, I, I love the third book, but there are some places in the fourth book where it improves upon the third book. Brutal PD is less annoying, for now at least. Not to mention, Dogman is a lot more involved in the story than he was in the third book. Slightly, that is. And, and the backgrounds are a lot better than they were in the first three books. And the story, for the most part, isn't that bad. Now, let's get into the problems I have with this book. The characters. Okay. Okay, some of the characters were good, like Petey, Little Petey, surprisingly, and m most most of the villains. But the others, they were either annoying or stupid. Like Dogman, instead of you know doing its job like a bodyguard is supposed to, is supposed to, he, he instead screws around on set, causing production of the film to be delayed even more, to the point where it's, it's just flat out cancelled. Also, the other problem I have with it's them. M making the cops look extremely stupid just to make Dogman look good. Which I have to call BS on because in other books that we've seen, we've seen the cops act completely normal. It's usually Dogman that acts like that. Seriously, Dave Filky, what are you what are you thinking like that? Because we can really establish that the cops don't act like that, so what was really the point? Also, the battle scenes in in the climax were they're pretty much cringe worthy and nothing more. I don't really like them that much. Also, there's the actors. The only good one that I really like is the one that the one that, that's gonna play Chief. He, 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 he's, yeah, he's actually kind of amusing in a way, but the others are kind of just plain and forgettable. Especially the fat guy who plays PD. He was pretty much forgettable. Excuse me, why'd they hire him? He looks something like PD. And I agree with PD about these actors. I agree. I agree when he doesn't like them because. Basically, just like alienating their own audience, who's seen what Dogman PD and the rest of, of them look like. So, basically, gonna just alienate their own audience. Also, Yolai was just there. She wasn't really that interesting. I kind of felt like that she was there because diversity. Oh, when I feel really bad for Sam and the other crew members and that and that guard, because they're constantly going through so much crap during the production of this movie, which didn't even end up happening because of all of this. Because Dogman screwing things up and PD trying to get this movie canceled. Oh, and also Little PD at the end just forgives PD for no reason. I feel all the crap he put him through. Like he forced P he forced Little PD to do a bunch of crap. Crimes, kicks ADHD on the other on the other side of the planet, and did all, all, a bunch of other crap. And Little PD is gonna forgive him for all the crap he's done. Seriously, See, Little PD, I thought you were better than this. <sighs> so overall, this book isn't isn't entirely bad. There are some pretty good moments, and it is slightly better than Dogman: A Tale of Two Kitties. But it's still, it's still the best book, by the way. In the entire series. But it's a slight step down from the previous three. And I still rank it along with the first three books. And coming in at number five, we have Dogman War of the Fleas. Yay! We'll just start with the positives and then we'll just get to the many gripes I have with this book. Well, for starters, some of the action scenes, like in the second, like in the final act, were actually pretty great. But there are also some action scenes I just found either cringy. Or, or just terrible, in my opinion. The backgrounds and illustrations overall look better than they were in the, the first three books and book four. You know, for some like, like the character designs, the buildings, Petey's robot, and all those other cool gadgets that, that they have at Dogman's house, which I would also talk about. On, on, on that little callback to the third book where, where there's like ro robo suit mode that they have. Th th that scene was pretty good. PD's flashbacks were pretty decent. Th there were a few parts of it that didn't make sense with like the whole Lord of the Lord of the Rings thing, which I can understand, which is in, in his imagination, like how to start so, like floating up with water. Also, why is the boat got a hole in it and so somehow is able to float? Like, why are they not sinking? Also, how they ended up is this like random island? Also, how do Piggy's glasses get broken when it turns out to only be imaginary? D did they somehow fall and break? Because from what I've seen with my glasses when they fall off, they don't usually crack for some reason. How so how did that happen? So yeah, that's pretty much all the positives I have. Now let's get into the many negatives that I have. Okay, let's get started with, with one of the biggest problems I have with this book. Little Petey. Little Petey. Ah, Little Petey. The characters who I used to like 
in, in, in books 3 and 4, Shadow Baby becomes one of the most annoying characters in the, in the entire series. His jokes aren't funny, they repeat the same thing, the same formula, over and over again, constantly. And for some reason, the other characters, except for Petey, find his jokes to be hilarious. And in the scene where, where, where Petey tells, tells Piggy that an airplane pooped on his eyebrow, everyone else starts laughing. Except for me and Petey, like, even he's wondering how is any of this supposed to be funny. Even when I was younger, I didn't find this funny. Oh yeah, and there's also that scene where Petey tells little Petey to stay in his... To, to stay in his robot while he goes deal with the villains. But no, little Petey won't listen. He doesn't listen to anyone. He decides to follow Petey and decides to, and decides to shout at Petey extremely loudly, which causes Petey to drop his gun and it ends up landing on the bad guys. And it ends up blowing their cover. And then little Petey, he doesn't feel any sense of remorse. He just smiles as if he did nothing wrong. The only time where he's actually good is where he tries to convince Petey to become good. Yeah, that was a pretty good scene. And there's a scene where we spray paint the robotic brontosaurus into a into a squirrel. That was also a pretty good idea. But that's it. That's all he has. And just like just like standing there, just like do do anything, just like watching Petey and, and Piggy just like just like talk about just like having a little chat. Don't like even do anything. The other the other two buffoons, the other bad guys, just right there. Doing nothing. What are they doing during this time to, you know, capture them or something? But no, they're doing absolutely nothing. Why are they standing there? Just do something already! Oh, when I asked for Clunky and Bub, they're pretty much pointless. They're standard villain henchmen or, a bunch, or just a bunch of bumbling buffoons. Oh, oh, and about the plot conveniences, because there were a lot of plot conveniences, so, so let me explain them. In, in the scene where Chief, Millie, and Sarah and Susie are being flung to their deaths, there's a convenient. Marshmallow Factory, right in front of them, which conveniently had a bunch of marshmallows waiting for them. How does that work? Oh, and there's a scene where Dogwood is flying to the air about the crash, and there's, there's this conveniently placed Henry Go Henry Go Factory right there from the crash into. Seriously, how convenient is that? Like, it could have been any other building, but it had to be that one. Oh, and there's a scene where Petey reached the dead end, and apparently there was a conveniently placed sewer right next to them so they can escape. Wow, I love plot convenience. Oh, and then there were the characters. I already talked about Little Petey, so I'll talk about Petey. Petey is a pretty good character in this book. And we do sympathize for him when he's constantly having to do with this annoying little furball, telling the stupid not knock jokes and overall ruining Petey's life. And then there was a scene where he protects his friends from danger when when Pig when Piggy is about to when Piggy is about to is, is about to obliterate them with the Robo Brontosaurus. Oh, and then there's a scene where he, like, stomps on them with, with, with his robots. He looks like he's having a good time. So, yeah, uh, on to Chief, Sarah, Zuzu, and Millie, because they're kind of the same. Because they're just, like, one little, just, like, one character. Honestly, they were just cringy, and they really do that much. But, and some of the scenes where they did do some action, it was just, it was just cringeworthy. It not really that much, it not really didn't, didn't have that much action put into it. They were kind of just along for the ride. Oh, and as for Dogman, honestly, he was just, he was just, Land. He didn't really do. He didn't really serve that much of the story and plot, so he he, he found this forgettable, which makes us thought of even more of a lie because it says Dogman, Lord of the Fleas, but he he doesn't really do that much in the book. Yeah, and about that ending scene, it's a scene where Dogman doesn't let go with the toy, doesn't let go with the, the little robot thing, and the fleas end up escaping. Seriously, like Dogman, why do you always do this? Why do you have to ruin? Why do you have to ruin it? Oh yeah, and then there's and then there's a scene where, where it's it's seen it's been pretty obvious that the fleas ended up escaping and climbed on the dog van, and it's made blatantly shown to, to the audience. But somehow, Chief and Millie don't notice this. Seriously, it's right next to them. How do they not hear him scratching and come to the conclusion that the fleas are there? Ugh. So overall, this book was mediocre to say the least. While there are some good parts, there are some some pretty bad parts. Can Dogwin Brawl of the Wild fix that? Well, let's find out. And coming at number six, we have Dogman, Brawl of the Wild. Here we go. Okay, I got done reading this book and I gotta tell you, there is a cluster ton of problems in this book. We're at the point where we're like what are we yelling at the book? Which I guess to some of you might sound weird because because of me ranting over a children's book. But you know what? Who cares? I'm, I'm still gonna rip into this book. But before I do that, let's discuss the positives I have with this book because there are positives. This means a no-brainer, but the art style is really great. 
I, I really like the scenes that during the night time where it shows like the northern lights. Those are some, those are some amazing scenes. The way Dave Filkey was able to blend in the claymation aesthetic with the 2D environment was was pretty good. It was pretty effective. A nice callback to the Levine spray blowing up from book one. Teams of Dogman and his friends saving people inside the burning building. Parts from the final acts with like the action scene were pretty great. And those are all the positives that I have. Now let's get to the many negatives. The will be scene where Chief yells at the mailman because for waking up from his nap. I guess it'd be pretty angry too, but he says they're doing important cop stuff. Gee, what important cop stuff? You napping? Do your job right, you freaking idiot. Also the question, when Dogwin is eating up the clay, how can Chief not hear when, hear Dogwin eating up the clay when he's right next to him? Also, I did the question, why would Petey leave his drink way on the ground for anyone to pick up? Like the fleas. Wait, when do you think that someone else will try to use it for evil? So the whole mess in the third act is kind of Petey's fault for his carelessness. Also, I really didn't like the scene of, of Little Petey and ADHD harassing Patty and that other cop I don't know the name of, who are just, you know, doing their job. Ugh, there, there, were evidence, there was evidence that Dogman did the crime, so a cop, so, so they had to do their job and arrest Dogman. They may be the world's best cop. Pretty likely by now, but it doesn't mean he he still can't be arrested. He's not above the law. Oh, oh, and about the thing where there were security cameras. Where we never see security cameras in Dogman's house. Are there hidden cameras? It, it, it's it's never shown or brought up again. They were just brought up so this one scene could happen. But Ruby is still annoying as ever. So why is Dogman not going to the pound? Yes, he may be human, but he's still technically a dog. Oh wait, this this just this being something I missed up. A missed opportunity that Dave Pilkey could have done. He could have shown a scene with other dog headed cops, and other bi bipedal dogs as like humans. Which is kind of what we see in the scene where Dogman sees the other dogs. But in any, any other scenes, they act like normal dogs. This could have been a miss this could have been an opportunity to show there are more dogs like Dogman. Oh, so there's another epic, but this, there's a scene where, where the warden plows through the dog jail and destroys it. Um, why? What do you make sense for him just like go through, break through the wall and then go to the other side? Really? Did really have? Did the whole place really that unstable that it collapses? It's not on impact. That's what I'm just wondering. It's kind of felt a little unnecessary, if you ask me. Oh, and there's a thing where Yoli insults a man and, and proceeds to beat him up for no reason. Doesn't get information on, on a crime. Oh, well, I don't blame the man for getting ticked off and wanting to beat her up. Oh, and since Yoli is famous. Wouldn't this little thing that she did ruin her image? The guy just like ran away. You think he would have like told the cops about what Yoe did to him? So wouldn't that ruin her image? Also, in the scene where the fleas are about to make a car come to life, they do nothing to stop them. This is what he did happen. It only takes for Zeus, a literal dog, to do something about it. And they stop being scared. Also, also, why are they, why are they not being kicked out for, for disturbing the movie? Where are the crew members? Or managers. You think they actually like, you know, kicking off for disturbing the movie because wouldn't there be people people complaining? But no, they're just so they're just chill about it. Oh wait, it was it was just so they that so all of them could get to the theater at the exact same time. Also, how do people not see the fleas using walking up with the living spray can? Is no one gonna talk about is no one gonna comment on what they're doing or they're too busy watching the movie? Surely one of them are seeing them, and they're doing nothing to stop them! Oh, and about the scene where little Petey tells- he basically throws Petey's words right back in his face. And I'm just like, hey, little Petey, you can't talk. You've been doing this- you've been doing this for two books, and even more, so you can't talk! I do the, also, I do have the question how Dogman is able to eat that entire claymation pooey thing. Wouldn't his intestines like his stomach- wait, wouldn't his stomach explode from all the- Clay and his intestines. Oh, and after the story, it's a mixed bag. Oh, I should also be talking about the plot conveniences. The guy that Yoei beat up said that the dog and a criminal robbed the living spray factory. But when we see it, we say that we see the dog and a criminal robbing the store. Wait, so we robbed it? So they robbed it? So they robbed the store again? What? Oh, it's never really explained. Wait, so we just so we what do you need the other living spray for? Oh, so they used the second living spray. To make the filthy thing come to life. But what they need the first one for? Again, it's never explained what they needed it for. Also, it's, it's pretty convenient that all of them arrived at the theater at the exact same time. Which I don't really have an issue with. 
but it's still a plot convenience in my opinion. Also, the soy crashes at that exact spot. Um, how? It could have it could have hit any other spot, but it had to hit that one so we get so we get some so we get some stupid poop joke. Also, how did the burrow come off? Was it that was it not that highly secure? I want to the characters. Well, oh, and Chief, I really care much for him. For instance, him crying the whole time. But not the whole time. Oh, oh, I forgot to mention about that scene where he comes to Dogman in the cell. I bet he wouldn't have done that for any other cop. Maybe Millie. Who knows? But anyway, he's nothing special. He's just okay. Oh, and as for Dogman, I also didn't really care about him that much in this book. It was, it was just there. It kind of bland. If anything. The dogs from the jail are also bland, but forgettable. PD hasn't changed at all. I, I honestly have nothing to say about Yo Wei. I don't really care much for Sarah in this book. But she did have some good scenes, though. Mortal PD is still as annoying as ever. Oh, oh, and as for Super Pewter, he's just a plot device and nothing more. Oh, and as for the characters like the Warden, the Guard, and the Judge, they were just bland and forgettable, in my opinion. The Fleas, I didn't really care much for them in this book. Oh, and as for Zuzu, she didn't really do much except that scene where she grabbed the living spray. So, this book is worse than Word of the Fleas, if you couldn't tell. By this review. I was hoping to be in the same range as the first Dogwin book, but after after reading this book again, it's not. It, it continues the downward spiral. Join me again as we talk about the next three Dogwin books in the series. Will they improve the series or not? Well, we'll just have to find out. Anyway, goodbye.